Hello everyone, I'm Finn from Finbrick42, and right here in front of me is set 21141, The Zombie Cave, from the Minecraft line of LEGO sets. This set originally retailed for $24.99, but I got it at my local Toys R Us at a 20% discount, so it was around $19. I'm quite interested to see the building techniques in this set, because in Minecraft, it's a block-based world. So, I think that would actually tie in very well with the LEGO theme, and I'm actually happy they've done sets like this. Maybe in the future I'll even review a few more Minecraft sets if I like this one. So, let's see how it looks. On the front of the box, it shows the set, and it looks like it actually covers a pretty good amount of area, and also has some very interesting figures with different styles of heads where they're cubes rather than the normal cylindrical style of minifigure heads. So yeah, I think that would be quite interesting to see and how everything works together like that. Yeah, it just shows you a few different features in the build, and I'll definitely try those out. You can see that this is one of those boxes that opens with those push tabs, and this one has two of them, which I think I've only seen once or twice before. So there we go. And it's open. So yeah, that opens pretty well. And now, I'll do a speed build. Alright, so that was quite an interesting build, and I'm very happy with how it all went together. It's pretty interesting how there are a bunch of different movable components that form the structure of it, and a whole bunch of different blocks. It's very really nice. There's also a very interesting action feature, and we'll see how that one works later. And as well as some pretty good looking minifigures. And I'll go into further detail with them in just a moment. But yeah, so I think that it's going to be quite interesting to show you guys, because there are a few different components that really make this thing what it is. It's pretty interesting. So now, I'll get into the main portion of the build, which is really the whole thing in this case. So right here in front of me is the main portion of the build, and wow, I'm very happy with how it looks actually. Um, it's got quite a few different components together, and I like how it has different levels going around. For example, right here on the lowest levels, you have some water, with a piece of sand and some sugar cane growing out of it, as well as some grass. And on there, there's a fence and a flower. And something that's nice is, like many other pieces in the set, the flowers are removable, and you can place them on really wherever you want, but especially the grass blocks, I'm guessing. You also have a stone layer, and behind that stone layer, on scan on a low level, is more is some of this lava which actually helps to support the highest level of the build. Now on top, we have this grass block area, and up there is actually an interesting action feature, which I'll show you right now. This will also show you the beginning of the many block pieces in this set. So if I pull on this right here, you can see that those fall right through the ground, because it's actually, the floor is slideable. So you can slide it right through there and there. And these are actually one plate taller than all the other blocks in this set because they need to be seen at the right height when they're at grass level. So it looks like they're just placed on top. And yeah, I think it works really smoothly. I've tried it quite a few times now. And every time, these blocks just fall right down. And yeah, they're pretty easy to get and put right back. So there we go. Now, something else that's very interesting about this build is this right here. You can see there's a little push lever right here and TNT. So as you might be guessing, it explodes if you just push on it. And there we go. So the TNT blasts off with a large chunk of rock. And this is a bit lucky for me because when I first built this and tried this out a few times, it didn't work that well at all. But I think over time, it just weakens the grip on this stud right here so it allows it to fly off quite easily. 
Now around back, you'll see there's a large pile of rocks and things. And these are all blocks. Now if you remove them all, you'll see that underneath is the very special block. Block with diamonds in it. And right there we have a bunch of one by one round studs that are in the aqua color. Or is this some kind of light blue? I think it's aqua or teal or one of those colors. And overall it is actually works pretty well for making it look like there are little fleckles of the thing inside the block. And you'll find four of these types of blocks in the set. Right here is some coal, which you could use later in your furnace, and I'll talk more about that furnace in just a moment. And if you go in front, you'll see a bit of redstone right here, and it's shown with the see-through red pieces, and I'll just try and get a bit of focus on there. And yeah, you can see that those pieces are just the see-through ones for the red. And back here, kind of hidden in the lava zone, is this block of gold. So yeah, that's quite nice to have all these different blocks around. And really, you have a lot. And the best thing about these is that you can actually place them on whatever place you want. So you could just make a tower, if you want, of all these different blocks. And yeah, really, it's up to your imagination. So that's something I really like about this set. And I think... That's why Minecraft and Lego work together very well, because it's really about using your imagination to move a bunch of different little pieces to make something big. And right here is a ladder that brings you to the next level of grass, and that brings you right to the furnace. So this furnace is quite interesting, because it has printing on this side and printing on this side. Now on the front, the front I assume, is the on side. So right here it shows that there is fire in the furnace. So with that, you can heat things like your gold ore blocks to make gold bars. So that's actually really cool. But on the other side, this is when the furnace is off. So I like how it gives you that option, so it's kind of a subtle detail, but it really adds to it. So if you're melting down some gold ore or not. The other piece with some really interesting printing is the TNT block, which is also quite easy to detach from its rock surface. And right here you see that just says TNT in the blocky font. On both sides it's the same 1x2 brick right there, but yeah, it's quite nice to have one of those. And that just places on there. It's quite nice because it's easy to set the TNT back up. I like how many detachable pieces there are in this set, because really it does give you lots of imagination to use your little Mini figures around to dig up the various things, and you can place blocks to make whatever you want, like a tower or something. Now obviously there aren't enough blocks to make a full house out of this, but for the size of the set I'm quite happy with the amount there are, and honestly I might even be forgetting some at this point, because they're just all over the place. Alright, now I've placed all the different blocks back into what I'm pretty sure is the proper placements, and one last thing I almost forgot is right here using some studs non top techniques where they're actually, this is upside down, using one of these reverse tiles, which is relatively new. They have a bat sleeping, which I'll show you with the minifigures. Speaking of which, I'll now show you all the minifigures. The first minifigure is Steve, who has an iron helmet and iron pickaxe, as well as a cookie. I'll remove all of those so you can see the minifigure a bit better, but something that I found very interesting when building this is the fact that the helmet is actually held on with friction. Now it's got quite a bit, so it takes a bit of effort to remove it, but it's interesting having a minifigure head with no stud. I think the printing on the torso is quite simple, but the opacity is pretty good. I wouldn't mind if it was just a bit thicker on the paint, but overall it's quite nice. Now with the face, it's really well done, because I know at times it can be unfortunate, and when they're printing on a different color for the face, it can sometimes end up not really looking clear enough. But this one, I think, does a really good job. And it's kind of interesting to see that he has purple pupils just to match his pants, I guess. Now, that's quite interesting. I can't tell, can't remember if that's how it is in the game or not, but either way, I like it a lot. It's a pretty simple minifigure, but obviously the most noticeable fact is the fact that he has a cube head, which is how the heads look in Minecraft. Now this is a new piece for the line. And it's actually kind of interesting how it's it's hollow inside for a better mold and better use of plastic. 
But um, also it just kind of has the regular adapter that most heads do. So it goes on quite nicely. It's I think it's actually a bit more firm of a placement than normal minifigure heads. So you won't have to worry about this getting loose. At least not that I can tell. Now right here we have one of the zombies from Minecraft. And this guy, he is very interesting because he is pretty much just like Steve. Except for he has green hands and green head with no hair. Now something else that's interesting is he has a very, very similar torso. Just with green printed on the skin. Or green printed for the skin color. And just like Steve, the zombie's head is, well, it's the same except for with green plastic. And the printing on this, I think, is quite good. And once again, it's just like Steve where it's minimal printing and purple pants and everything. So yeah, I think it's actually a very nice looking minifigure. And quite simple, but I like it that way. Now, unfortunately, my baby zombie minifigure had a printing error, which I hope is not common, and I hope no one else has had this, but it's a little strange by the fact that they printed the eyes and nose very low, so low, in fact, that the nose was cut off. Um, luckily, LEGO has a very good uh, kind of service about this, where they will replace anything with printing errors or broken pieces when you first get a set. They'll also replace missing pieces. So I contacted them right before making this part of the video, so, yeah, hopefully I'll get one. I'll give you an update if I get a replacement piece, and I'll replace it. But yeah, it's kind of interesting because it really just looks like a smaller version of the Steve and Zombie heads. Just vote for the uh, baby torso design. And just like the zombie, it has the green kind of torso printing right there. So I think that's a nice addition. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing really how it looks with the properly printed head. But overall, this isn't, you know, it isn't too bad. It doesn't really affect the set that much, so I think it's pretty good. Last but not least is this very interesting bat design that gives you two different wing positions. Right here, the wings are all folded up, but if I just do this, you can now see that the wings are extended. And I just think that's kind of a good way to use some of those back bracket pieces. So. If I move it a little closer forward, you see they even printed on a one by one stud a uh, its very own bat face, which I find is actually, I think that's a very good way to use some space. They didn't have to make any new pieces for that. And yeah, I think it works very well. And I especially like the fact that you can just fold the wings away just like this. It takes just a moment, but overall it really gives you a good effect. So I think that's a great part usage right there. Alright, now, on to the final review. This set came with 12 extra pieces, and my three favorite pieces from this are actually this back bracket, it came with the bat, this one by one stud, which also came with the bat, it's a printed stud, just like the one that's on the bat there, and it has the printed face, there we go, we got it to focus, as well as a cookie, which, you know, at this point, they're getting pretty common, but still very nice to have another cookie. And yeah, apart from that, just has a few one by one studs, most of which were either used in the torch or inside the different blocks that had different ores in it. So yeah, those are the extra pieces, quite nice. And now I'm just gonna give my overall opinion on the build. All right, so overall, I think that this was actually a really great set. And um, it was quite a fun build. I like the fact that you can customize it a lot. I'm slightly disappointed that, you know, the baby zombie head didn't print quite properly, but knowing LEGO's customer service, I'm pretty sure that I'll get a replacement one very soon. And I'll give you an update about that if I do. So, yeah, just overall, I think lots of cool features to this set. And for the price, especially considering I got it on sale, but the price as it was before that even, I think that you really get your money's worth and really there are quite a few different things to try out. And I think it can actually inspire you to try your own different creative things. So yeah, I think it's a really great set. So thank you everyone for watching and I hope you have a great day.